Hello everyone. Today we are here at Dell headquarters in the Customer Solution Center Innovation Lab. I am Pallavi and with me is Mike. And today we are going to review the XE8640 server. So Mike, why don't you give us a brief overview of the server? Sure, so the XE8640 is our 4U two socket air-cooled system featuring NVIDIA's four-way H100 700 watt SXM GPUs. Why don't you show the details of the server here? Maybe we can start with the front of the server. All right, let me take the bezel off and we'll go from there. So up front, we have eight two and a half inch NVMe or SAS drives, you know, U2 or 2.5 inch. Uh, we could also put the eight uh, E3.S drives, that's Gen 5, if you want the higher bandwidth, uh, not featured in this view. And we have our five fan modules that are exclusively to cool the GPU uh, cooling solution that's on the bottom level of the server, which we'll show you a bit more about later. So if you move back from there, first thing you see is the fans for the upper level. So this is just cooling from these drives from here above and cooling the dual socket Intel fourth generation processors as well as 32 DIMM slots and four PCIe slots. So we have 32 DIMMs populated here in the view. If you were actually configuring the system, it's likely you will only populate 16 to get one DIMM per channel for maximum memory bandwidth for the workloads that this system deals with. So let's spin it around and take a look at the back. So starting over here on the rear, we have the BOSS N1 module. That's the new boot optimized storage solution for the new generation. Uh, what's new about it is that it's NVMe drives now. So we have 480 gig or 960 gig NVMe uh, in a RAID 1. So you just throw your OS on there and the rest of your disk can be scratched for your GPU space. We have, uh, moving on this side, four Gen 5 uh, by 16 PCIe slots, only two of which are populated in our view here. And then down below, we have our optional one gig LOM. We have our OCP3 slot. Both of these slots can do the shared LOM standard uh, iDRAC port redirect that all of PowerEdge can do, and then the iDRAC port, you know, standard USB and VGA. So down below, uh, we mentioned those four 700 watt GPUs in here. We also have up to 350 watt processors with the Intel. Uh, there are That's four. That's a lot of power lot. consumption. So not only is there not just two power supplies, there's four. They're 2,800 watts each. So 208, 240, uh, 2,800 watts. You said, Mike, we have four SXM, four-way SXM GPUs in here, but I don't see them in here. All right, so they actually fit underneath this motherboard we just looked at down in this space here. And as I mentioned that these fans are blowing across them, we'll hop over here to the actual inside pulled out for better detail here, and we'll go through it. So first, I want you guys to understand, so this is uh, an H100 PCIe GPU. Same GPU is in here, uh, except that it is throttled because PCIe uh, thermally cannot do what a four inch tall heatsink can do, right? So the GPU is just down here. This is an H100 700 watt. This is just the generic NVIDIA um, heatsink example that they provide. So what we've done is remove this heatsink and down here on this board, you can see that we have cold plates on top of the same GPUs. This is H100, 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 H100 down on the four way board. So this one has the full TDP 700 That's word right. GPUs exactly. as opposed to the 350 word PCIe GPUs. And the NVLink, you know, 900 gig bandwidth that they share amongst each other uh, is across all four. So you have across these four GPUs with 80 gigs of high bandwidth memory each, you have 320 gigs of high bandwidth memory that you can crunch one large training problem on at once. So this uh, innovative a cooling solution is, is one of the reasons that we're able to get to 35C inlet temperature for all configurations on this server. So we have taken off the heat sink, put on cold plates. We have an internal pump that, you know, liquid assist air cool, just like on your gaming PC at home, you might have an AIO cooling your, your GPUs or your CPU. The pump sends it to this radiator here, you can see, which is what those fans across the front of the server we were looking at blow across. So this radiator actually is where all the heat gets removed from the system after it's come off on, on liquid efficiently from the GPUs. Got it. And I think there's leak sensors all the way through the solution so that customers don't have to worry about. Right. Uh, and you can leaking. see that this braided wire in the groove right here, that's what that's designed to do. And that'll alert up to iDRAC if anything should happen. Great. So behind here, we have uh, this, bo this blue board you see has two heat sinks on it that are covering the Gen 5 144 lane PCIe switches. There are two of them on here. A lot of PCIe connections off of this board, that's going to connect to the CPU, it's connected to the four Gen 5 by 16 PCIe slots, 
and it's going to connect to the local storage. So you have your eight NVMe drives, uh, you have your four by 16 Gen 5 slots, your GPU can go directly with GPU Direct to that local storage or out that networking without having to hop through the CPU. So no kernel copies up there to deal with, no extra hop, no extra latency, direct path if that's how your customer chooses to code. Thanks, Mike, for walking us through the server. So Mike introduced us to the server, and let's talk about the workloads and use cases and what this server can actually do. And to talk about it, we have Liz. Hi, Welcome, Bobby. Liz. Yeah. So why don't you tell about the workloads that this uh, server can run? Sure, absolutely. So this is actually a really cool server. You can run all kinds of workloads on it. It's quite a workhorse. And because it has the H100 SXM GPUs, we expect to see 2x or greater improvement over the last generation XE8545, which had the A100 SXM GPUs. What are the workloads? Uh, can you explain a bit more about it? So one of the really great workloads for this system are HPC-oriented workloads. So items like uh, weather prediction modeling, so predicting the path of hurricanes and items like that to help save people. Uh, one of the reasons the system is really good at this is because this four-way GPU structure is very low latency, so all the GPUs can talk to each other without having to go through any switches. It's very, very, very fast. The PCIe switches only come in when the GPUs are trying to talk to CPUs, uh, drives, all that other kind of stuff. So when the GPUs are just talking to each other, it's very fast. Additionally, because it's a four-way system and a two-socket, the number, the core count per GPU is quite high, so that makes it pretty ideal for HPC applications. Are there any other workloads that this uh, server can run apart from HPC? Oh yes, absolutely. We run AI ML training and inference workloads on this box all the time. One such example is medical image segmentation, in which you identify tumors in CT scans, thus speeding up patient diagnosis times. We run that kind of workload on this box pretty often, and it can do both training and inference. Awesome. So it can do HPC modeling and simulation, as well as machine learning, deep learning, training, and inferencing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you, Liz, sure, for you're letting us know the workloads. And thanks, everyone, for watching the video. If you have any more questions about the XE8640 server, go to Dell.com.